This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker, uh, Marta Barbato, who uh, is an alumnus of the 2012 uh, Eric P. Newman Graduate Seminar here at the ANS. And uh, we met roughly 10 years ago at a conference in Tübingen. Uh, and I've uh, kept up with her a bit since then, and she had gone on to Warwick and other places, and now she's an archaeologist at the uh, Museo Nazionale Romano in Rome, and has published quite a bit on uh, Roman coins and Roman coin circulation, and I'll, I'll put a link to her academia.edu page in the chat if any of you want to check that out, uh, but I'll uh, pass it over to Marta. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan, for the invitation. Um, it's really a pleasure to be here today to be part of a long table of the INS. So uh, today I'm going to present you a quite recent uh, research of mine that I was able to carry out a few years ago in 2019 when I was working as archaeologist uh, uh, for the always for the Ministry of Culture in the Basilicata region in southern Italy. And uh, because of this, I was then and uh, I had access to unpublished material kept uh, in the National Museum in Potenza, which is the capital uh, city of the region. Um, and so I was able to have access to an unpublished uh, coin hoard uh, from uh, a small town uh, in Basilicata. Um, and the, the material was still unpublished. Uh, um, this is the, the coin hoard, a coin hoard containing uh, the first Roman uh, Romano Campanian silver issue, along with other fi similar finds always found in the same uh, in the same region. Uh, but it was still unpublished, and so uh, I mean the. Um, I was able and I uh, had uh, also um, the chance to study it uh, in the light of its archaeological context or recovery in association with other materials from the same excavation. This is the, um, the main, I mean, um, um, the main, I mean, the, the importance of the this kind of um, uh, the, the chance I had because the other finds, the other similar finds from the region uh, were published uh, without their context, with the archaeological context of the recovery, which has, as we know, uh, important and uh, pieces of evidence uh, to the to the coin finds. So uh, the recent publication with the complete catalog of the San Chirico Novo Horde from the Basilicata region in southern Italy, opens new considerations on the first phase of minting, circulation, and use of the Romano Campanian silver, which is the, the RRC 13-1 series, in the light of the archaeological data available for that recovery and other comparable finds from the internal part of Lucania. So here you see a map of the region with, uh, I underlined a few uh, names, a few towns that I'm going to mention in during the, the presentation. Uh, so, um, in fact, the analysis of some of the hordes containing the first Romano silver didrachms, along with their archaeological context, coming from a restricted geographical area in southern Italy, and all dated to the turbulent years of the Pyrrhic War and its aftermath, seems to point towards the belief, already supported by many scholars, that the first Rom Romano Campanian silver coinage not only does not circulate widely in peninsular Italy, but it originates from mainly cultural rather than economical reasons in the Roman world. So uh, I'll start with a brief overview on the first Romano Campanian silver issue. Quoting Andrew Barnett, silver coinage was adopted in about 300 BC with a, an isolated a small issue accompa a com accompanied by a few silver fractions. As is well known, RRC 13-1 series, that is the first Romano Campanian silver issue, was produced on a small scale with very limited number of dyes. Four of verse dyes are known so far at the probable mint of Neapolis. Finds suggest that in the first phase, that is from 300 BC to the end of the Pyrrhic Tarentine War, it circulated exclusively in southern Italy, in the Camp in Campania, Lucania, and Apulia regions. Technical features with standard metal fineness are the same as Neapolis. 
no apparent link has been detected between the very first Roman silver coinage and the contemporary Roman struck bronze issues. At present, uh, 14 hordes containing the Mars horse head Romano didrachms as their only Roman issue are recorded. Among those, we can distinguish different groups on the basis of their closing date, as suggested by the most recent South Italian coins uh, they contain, especially Neapolis, Velia, and Taras. As far as the oldest group of hordes is concerned, the so-called Campania horde, the, the horde from Valesio near Brindisi, uh, and the Capua horde belonging to the group varied by uh, 290 BC, any detailed evidence of the immediate context of the find is lost, whereas we know that the Baselice horde on the edge of the Irpinia region, which is the inner Campania region towards the Apennine, uh, was deposited around 300 BC and in a possibly found in a Samnite tomb. Moving forward, uh, from these premises, I'll focus on the second block of hordes buried on a later stage, that is after 290 BC, with a peak during the central years of the Pyrrhic Tarantine War from 280 to 272 BC, and on a few other coin finds of the same period from other districts of Lucarian region. You see here in the table the, this group of hordes. More specifically, archaeological data clearly show that the first Roman silver coins are found along with the Neapolitan and Velian coinages in the more internal Lucania region in indigenous contexts, which still did not have permanent or long contacts with the Roman world, and that are always attested in a scenario of danger, destruction and abandonment due to the events of the war. This, I think, seems to better assess the cultural environment in which our C13-1 series at its earlier stages is found, adding further support to the view that since the introduction of the first Romano Campanian silver, so small in terms of volume of production and inextricably linked to the Roman expansion towards the south, as an emulative phenomenon, uh, a cultural fact, a desire to adopt to adopt the institutions of Greek society and how to represent themselves as such. For sure, not made for any particular military pay uh, reason. Uh, in fact, military pay requires uh, a coinage made in large and regular issues. With this in mind, is evocative what Plutarch made Pyrrhus say after the Battle of Heraclea in July 280 BC. The barbaric formation, intending with this the Romans, is not that barbaric. As for the internal part of Lucania, namely the western and eastern Lucanian Apennine districts, featured by long river valleys which connect them to the Ionian Sea, find support the evidence for the use to some extent of silver by the 4th century BC, mainly from sanctuary sites, even if it was not on anything like the substantial scale of the use of coinage in the Greek cities on the Tyrrhenian and Ionian coasts. Archaeological and textual evidence permits uh, to trace the cultural and historical circumstances, at least for four hordes, all with a similar composition and containing RC 13.1. They were buried in a rapid sequence during the years of the war against Pyrrhus. So focusing, focusing now on the, um, on the, the horde from San Chirico, which I was able to publish in 2019. So you see the, the geographical um, placement of the, of the town, which is on a, um, on a river valley, on a middle river valley that, that leads towards the, the, Tyrrhenia, uh, the, the Ionian coast, sorry, and towards the, the Greek part of the region, the Greek colonies. So the site where residential buildings dating from the 5th to the 4th century BC have been brought to light by the local superintendenza in the late 1980s lies just one kilometer from the modern town of San Chirico Nuovo on a hilltop facing the middle of the river Bradano Valley. A recent topographical survey confirmed the existence of a settlement on top of the hill, which occupied nearly 12 hectares during the period of its larger expansions. 
This settlement also accounts for, the, for trench tombs from the Archaic to the Lucanian period, which is the fourth century BC, spread all over the area. It belongs to the series of nucleated hilltop settlements in a densely populated area from the sixth to the third century BC on the northern side of the Basento meander between northern Lucania and Apulia. Information on the extant, extant fine spot and archaeological context of the horde is limited, though the associated materials found in the same trench level are quite informative. So the, the coins were found in, inside a locally produced banded ware vessel, which has been almost entirely reconstructed, as you can see in this slide. Um, other material found in the same trench level, along with the hoard, include pottery shards, uh, two stone projectiles of the diameter of 10 centimeters, a pilum catapultarium, and other archaeological material the, for, the, um, uh, for the stone projectiles and the pilum catapultarium, which is a tool of the artillery. Uh, this is a um, uh, compar comparison with um, some similar artillery material found in a site in Spain during the, I mean, of the age of Augustus. The, sorry. The, um, the, this and other archaeological materials suggest that the hoard may have been found in a destruction layer inside what have, may have been a collapsed structure. The hoard comprises 146 silver coins, all full weight didrac, starters, and distarters. The hoard contains a high proportion of Hellenistic issues minted by the southern Italian polis uh, of Neapolis. Taras, Turi, and Velia. Namely, it consists of a notable number of Neapolitan didrachms with the head of the nymph left on the obverse, late Velian issues, and the Romano Campanian for silver, as well as a moderate presence of issues from the mint of Taras. So I will show you briefly the, all the, um, uh, the coins in the, in the hoard. Then we, we can go back on specific uh, issues. The associations and the relative quantities of the means represented, especially for the issues close to the terminal date in the hoard, <laughs> reflect the circulation pattern known for the late fourth early third century BC especially in the distribution of Neapolitan and Valian didrachms across a precise geographical district, including the interior of Lucania, along with the first Romano Campanian silver issue, RRC 13.1. They are four specimens, maybe I didn't say it earlier, the Romano Campanian here down to the, to the right of the slide. The content, is similar to other hordes which contain the first Romano Campanian silver issue, along with the prevalence of specimens from Neapolis and Velia. The Foggia, the Oppido Lucano, and the Lucania 1953 hordes have terminal dates comparable with that from San Chirico Nuovo. Moreover, there is a similar recurrence of not only the same issues, but also the same pairs of dyes for the valiant specimens for which the dye sequence is available. In many cases, similar correspondences have been found among the hordes of San Chirico, Foggia, Lucania 1953, and to a lesser extent, Oppido Lucano. In the San Chirico horde, no reduced weight starters uh, are found among the Tarantine coins of those uh, or those from Heraclea, Turi, and Croton, which are conversely present at Topido Lucano. On the basis of the revised chronologies put forward by Wolfgang Fischer Bossert and Salvatore Garraffo, the coins of Taras period six that are still all full weight and that, that are the, um, the most recent Taras coins in presence in, present in the hoard, must be lowered and compressed into a short period of time between 281 and 276 during the military operations in Southern Italy connected with the Pyrrhic War. According to both scholars, the weight reduction at Taras in about 276 
took place later, later than at other means. The San Chirico Novo horde that does not have a unique composition when compared to other similar hordes found in uh, adjacent geographic area, but it can, be, it can be used to test to what extent the new framework of quarantine chronology fits the picture offered by all these hordes. Despite the relatively remarkable number, five of Neapolitan didrachms with face uh, of the nymph left, usually associated with already reduced Tarantine coins in other hordes, there are no reduced Tarantine specimens. On the other hand, the Oppido Lucano horde has two Tarantine drugs, mm, sorry, two Tarantine, dra Tarantine drugs of the reduced weight standard issues of period seven, and also contains the last section of Velia Williams period nine. Conversely, only one Neapolitan specimen with the head uh, facing left occur occurs in the latter horde, and it is in slightly better condition that, uh, in the of this, mm, uh, than the specimen in the San Chirico Novo horde. So this is the Oppido Lucano horde. I'm going to tell you more about this in a, in a second. All these details constitute pieces of evidence for achieving a more reliable relative chronology for the hordes listed in the table. The small differences which can be observed between the hordes, so sorry, I'll go back because. Um, um, so the small differences which can be observed between the hordes suggest that their burials occur, occurred almost contemporaneously within a very short period of time probably during the years 280 to 76. It follows that the closing dates of the San Chirico Nuovo and Foggia hordes may possibly be slightly earlier than that of the Oppido Lucano horde. The territory's instability after Pyrrhus departure to Sicily in 279 is reflected in the many hordes from this geographically restricted area in which Rome retook control over the indigenous peoples the Lucanians, the Samnites, and Bretti were Pyrrhus uh, allies, Auxilia Sociorum, the, the, uh, the sources, the written sources, um, and named them. Unfortunately, the evidence from degrees of wear can be ambiguous, and several technical considerations must be taken into account before it can be assessed. In fact, um, the board was cleaned, only a part of it was restored uh, because it was on display uh, partially uh, a few years ago in the, I think, 2015 or something like that in the National Museum of Potenza. So the degree of wear sometimes is difficult to, to, to assess and to, um, to say because uh, a part of it was clean and a part of it is unclean. So it's, uh, the, the, the state of preservation is very different. Um, so apart from the Hort's very old 5th and early 4th century coins, the rest of the specimens is not very worn and does not present surface cor corrosion. Later specimens of Velia, Neapolis, Turoi, Locri, and Tara Spirit 6 display little wear. This is notable in some of the Tarantine specimens. For instance, I'll, I'll go back so you can see. So here to the to the left of the of the slide, you see the Tarantine coins, and namely the the most recent ones are framed in the blue frame. And you see the, for instance, number fifty six is not um, uh, very worn. I mean, it's not worn at all, almost. So um, the four Romano companion did die dragons. Here to the to the to the right, um, have a fair degree of wear, and the legend Romano has been almost completely worn off on two specimens out of four. The Neapolitan issues with the head right surrounded by dolphins, taught by mm, here the numbers. Sorry, I don't know if it's yeah, they are in this slide 1719 thought by some scholars to be contemporary with the Romano Campania first silver issue, appear to be in a little worse condition than the Roman didrachms. 
The hoard from San Chirico Nuovo is then of little help in assessing a more precise absolute dating for the beginning of the Romano Campania silver coinage. Although if one accepts the new lower chronology for Tara period six, some new hypotheses open up. The specimens of Tara period six in San Chirico Nuovo hoard are fresher than in its uh, Romano Campanian diagrams, uh, as they are too in the Oppido Lucano hoard. Accordingly, it is difficult to consider those issues as contemporaneous. In addition, with the lowering of the last phases of Tara's period five to the years 290-281, the associations of these Tarantine specimens with the first Romano Campanian silver coins in the earliest hordes remains consistent with the dating of the latter to the decade 300 to uh, 290 BC, most probably towards the end of that span. The Horde's archaeological context seems to be connected to the destruction and abandonment of a part of the settlement on the top of the hill of San Chirico Nuovo. Other Hordes from the same area were also found in context which show traces of devastation and sudden abandonment, in particular Oppido Lucano. As you can see here, the coins were um, found together along with, uh, with jewels, uh, a necklace, a gold necklace and uh, brooches. Um, so there are also um, other other finds from the region, not hordes, but uh, site finds that were found in context of destructions, uh, which can be really connected to the operation of the war against Pyrrhus and the, um, the, con the, the Roman operations, let's say, after Pyrrhus left uh, southern Italy towards Sicily. And I'm referring to um, the, the finds from Monte Giordano, which we saw at the beginning, uh, it's, a, it's a site, uh, on, we saw the, the map at the beginning, um, it's uh, close by the, the, the colony of Heraclea uh, towards the, the Brutium. Uh, here, um, uh, a few coins of the same period were found in a destruction layer of what was a farm, possibly a Hel Lucania Hellenistic farm. But also an interesting, another interesting find um, is that from Casale Pittari, which is a site nearby uh, Salerno in internal, the, 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 the north, northwestern Lucania region. Uh, nonetheless, the dif differences between these cited contexts have to be stressed. The finds from Monte Giordano and Casale Pittari were discovered in destruction layers, and they were possibly small stores of wealth not intentionally buried, but fallen down during the collapse of the buildings. They could have fallen from a shelf or some elements on the wall, along with the scatter with scattered shards of their containing vessels. Moreover, at Monte Giordano and Casale Pittari, uh, RSC 31 silver coin is not attested, though the composition of this find or these finds is certainly comparable to the hordes formerly cited. Additional finds of the same period from inland Lucania districts can be listed. One is the um, is that from Santa Maria d'Anglona, which is a, a site, a, an inland sanctuary site, and not, not far from Heracleia. Archaeological report says that the context which the coin came uh, from was abandoned by 280 BC, even if the evidence from the coins, I think, um, supports an earlier date in about 290 BC. Then we have other two uh, sites uh, um, inland Lucania. One is, is Gallicchio and the other is Laurenzana. Um, the, the Laurenzana one specifically is interesting, I think, for the exclusive presence of the means of Neapolis and Velia. We don't have Rome, but the Velia and the Neapolis coins, I mean, are the same we find in the hordes also, along with the, with the Roman silver. However, the finds just mentioned seems to point towards an earlier stage of the circulation of silver coinage in Lucania, likely too early for the first Romano Campanian silver to be attested, considering its chronology and the small scale production. Another element to be considered in such analysis is the evidence from the hordes on the Ionian coast, namely the Greek colonies of Lucania. 
Metapontum and Heracleia allied to Rome during the Pyrrhic War. Hearts buried by 280 to 70 from the era of Metapontum are four, and their composition do not include any coins from the mints of Neapolis, Velia, nor Romans for silver. The coins issued by the latter mint authorities during, sorry, um, during the late fourth and the first quarter of the third century BC feature a closely tightened presence across internal regions of Irpinia, North and Western Lucania, lacking from Greek context of Magna Grecia. This geographical spread outlines the Roman penetration into Southern regions, which as we know, culminated with the Tarentine War and Pyrrhus intervention. As you can see also from this map uh, from Yarrow, the uh, latest book here, the, um, all the fine spots of the RSC 13 one in Southern Italy are clearly um, found along the penetration path of the Roman army. So the pattern that clearly emerges from the hoard evidence suggests then urgent concealments in a very unstable and insecure period and region, internal Lucanian district, to be connected to the military operation of the first phase of the Pyrrhic War. Many Lucanian sites were fortified with defensive walls after the second half of the fourth century. For instance, the site of Oppido Lucano, um, where the presence of jewels along with the silver coins is also evidence of the urgency and uncertainty that may have motivated its concealment. Lucanians were involved in the war for political reasons as, as allied to Pyrrhus, see McCoy in the sources, but it cannot be excluded that they may also have been employed by Pyrrhus as mercenaries. If so, they would have benefited from a stipend and a share of, um, of, the, boot, of the war booty. In this light, the composition of the Foggia, Lucania 1953, San Chirico Nuovo and Oppido Lucano hordes can be hypothetically interpreted as part of some booty or mercenary pay taken after the first two battles that saw the Epirot king victorious over, over the Romans at Heracleia in 280 BC and at Tausculum in 270 BC. The concealment of all these hordes can most plausibly be, pla be placed during the years 280 to 76 BC, providing further proof of the recurring violence of the period when Lucanians and other indigenous peoples left behind by Pyrrhus were attacked and overpowered by Roman forces. Between 278 and 272 BC, triumphs were celebrated at Rome for victories over Lucanians, some knights and Bretti. So to conclude, uh, the Pyrrhic victory in this case, both in its literal and figurative meaning, and the immediate aftermath gave us the chance to see RRC 13.1 issue in context and stress again from different angles the cultural significance of the choice to adopt silver coinage by the Roman state. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Marta. Um, we'll open it up now for questions and discussion. If anyone has any. Uh, Questions for Marta? Is my audio working? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can hear okay. you perfectly. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure there are questions on Bishai. I mean, I, I, I am, group, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> I'm sure there are many questions, even because I couldn't really, I mean, say everything on this uh, on this find. So we can, I can expand on this if you. No, oh, yeah, that was great. I mean, to put it in context in that kind of way, you know, it's not not you don't you don't often have that fullness of discussion. There is a um, question in the chat. It says, uh, mm -hmm. do you know how many examples are extant? 
How many examples of the first Romano Campanian silver? Uh, I think um, not, I mean, I don't know how many in general because from these hordes, there are not many at all, but uh, they were, I'm, I'm not positive. I only know, I mean, the numbers of dice are very few. So I bet the, the coins are less than 100. I mean, less than 100 that are known, even, even less, I think. There any other questions or comments for Marta? Well, excuse me, I have a question. Um, let's see, I'll uh, start my video. It's a general question, so please excuse it. Uh, first, congratulations on publishing this hoard. It's uh, very nice to have a proper publication of a hoard. And I'm uh, curious, does the uh, Museo Nazionale have a plan to publish other hordes that are in the museum? Uh, uh, okay, the, in the museum there are there is a, the other horde of, uh, that I mentioned, the Oppido Lucano horde, and this already it was already published in the early nineties, nineteen ninety five. I don't remember. If you want, I can give you the uh, the precise uh, reference. Uh, there are. I mean, the question is if the museum wants to publish other site finds or archaeological, I mean, usually it's very difficult because, you know, archaeological excavations, when they are published, it's difficult to publish the coins because the numismatists are not many. So uh, this is a complicated question. Anyway, the other the other hoard present in the collection of the Museo Nazionale in Potenza is the Oppido Lucano one and is published. So, so both of the, the the hordes are now published. Okay, I, I was uh, thinking specifically uh, because I uh, study Roman Republican coins of the Macarese horde in the Museo Nazionale Romano. It's, ah, a, okay. it's a big horde, a little over a thousand uh, coins. Any chance that that's going to be published with, with good illustrations? Uh, I don't know. I don't work for the coin cabinet there. I cannot really answer this question. I mean, I I, I, I hope so. I mean, I can only say that um, I really hope that they will start publishing a lot of the ancient material. Uh, I mean, but I don't know, the Roman material, at least. All right, thank you. It was an unfair question. <laughs> no, 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 you're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much again. Uh, we really appreciate it. And